What is up tuners? Welcome back to the garage and it is a beautiful day outside. I have got to run down the road to the Home Depot to pick some stuff up. So why wouldn't I tune during the process? Stick around. <music> Hey everybody, welcome back to The Garage, and as always, if you find this video helpful or any of my other videos helpful, throw that thumbs up, and if you have not subscribed already, click the button down there in the corner. I appreciate all the new subscribers, all the new patrons. Check out the link down below for the Patreon. That being said, today we are focusing on the throttle body. I'll throw a link up in the corner of whenever we did the review, unboxing, installation of the Solar Performance throttle body. We definitely have some different airflow characteristics down on the bottom end. It causes the truck to drive a little bit sketchy right now, a little bit. The throttle body is very twitchy feeling. So the first thing that we need to do though is we've got to set up uh, the truck for speed density tuning. We've got to make sure that the virtual volumetric efficiency table is dialed in for the new throttle body. There's a good chance that we're hitting new cells and being that this is a Gen 5 platform, which is the torque-based platform, it is imperative that the VVE table is as close to as good as possible because it uses those numbers in the torque calculations. And so if we're getting off the normal area that we would hit down below, it's skewing those torque calculations off and that will cause drivability issues. So that's the first step. After that, then we'll go in, pull a log. Once we get the VVE dialed in, put it back into uh, normal closed loop operation with the math being the primary fuel uh, control. Then we will pull a log and see how it looks there. See if it's smoothed out because that alone may be enough to smooth out how the throttle body reacts. So I'm going to, as I said, run down to Home Depot and pick some tools up or pick some parts up and I will pull a log on the way there. We'll pull it up, we'll take a look at the speed density tune and uh, see if we need to make any adjustments. Okay, so like the idiot that I am, uh, I forgot to turn on DFCO for whatever reason, but the cool thing about it is I have got the accelerator position log, the accelerator pedal position log, so we can actually filter this log out. But as you can see, it is very red. That is to be expected. I had a very good inkling that we were going to be getting a lot more airflow than we were used to uh, down low because of the way that this throttle body was designed. This is what we're looking for is this red. So I'm gonna go in here on this map that I'm using right now and I'm gonna throw a filter variable on here for accelerator pedal. So if I type in accelerator, AC is enough, then I'm gonna click this button that says show only parameters back by channels. This means it's only gonna show me channels that I actually logged. Okay, there it is right there. Accelerator pedal position. And this is gonna be in percent. You gotta make sure that that reads up properly or else you won't filter it. If you left it as number, it would be 0 0.00 to one as opposed to zero to 100%. And so we want this anytime it is greater than zero. See if that, yep, well, no. Let's bump it up a little bit more. See if it takes care of any of these. Now nah, we're still getting some bad cells on that one. This one right here, 132. We are not 132% off on that one. So we are pretty far off from here to there though. So we can probably smooth in between. We'll leave it as is for now. And let's go ahead and copy this, jump over to our tune. And while we're in here, maybe we should go ahead and turn off DFCO, right? What do you think? Do enable RPM to 8,000. Bump this to 7,999. Make sure we don't have anything else like cat over temp is still enabled. Bush league guys, Bush league. Even I forget to do this stuff sometimes. But now that that's out of the way, let's take a look at our VVE table. We're working with the open switch. And we're going to pay special multiply by percentage half. Now, this is the one that we definitely gotta smooth over. We're gonna fill in our gaps here, and then we're gonna blend out. Like you've seen me do in the past, fill up any gaps, then we want to blend out as much as possible so we have smooth transitions. That's what keeps us from getting bad data. So I'm actually going to blend these this way because the numbers are higher here where we're 1900. If I were to blend between these two points, 
this would have gone down between 1734 and 1590. So the best way to do this is to blend over from your high values and that'll fill those in. And we want to get as much of this filled out in this area so we don't have bad zone transitions. You hear me talk about it. This is what I'm talking about. Fill that one like so. Bring all these over. All these down. And this is, we are filling in areas that we're not going to be able to hit. That's why we're doing it this way. So we've got some stuff there to fill in. And we're looking for the highest values that we created to make sure that we're not going the opposite direction of what we need to on this. Then we can come out onto some of these and just blend maybe four or five. And this is how you create those smooth transition zones. said in the past one of the best things that you can do if you can't blend into this first cell here you're not going to be in 400 rpm so just come down here and you can do the same thing for this row copy this row and paste it right there so there is no transition in that area that we're not hitting same ordeal with this one come in here copy this row Fill it in here, maybe to about there, and then we'll do a blend on transition here. Well, that's actually not bad. I like that one. Okay, let's calculate, see what we come up with. Shouldn't be too bad. We're going to go ahead and copy this over to the manifold switch close just to be safe. This is not really necessary, but it makes sure that if for some reason your tune is working on one of the other ones, uh, it'll work properly. I'm going to go ahead and flash this in, keep on driving. I'll catch back up with you then. Okay, we're looking a little better down here. We got a couple lean spots still, a couple rich spots. That is whenever we calculate the equation that is taking our values. And it's like fifth order polynomial math. And because of that, to calculate the curves, to build the map, it has to adjust values automatically. It causes us frustrations as tuners on these virtual ones. Uh, I did kind of get up into the water throttle stuff and I don't necessarily want that data. I'm going to try and filter it a couple ways here real quick. Let's bump our cell hits up and see if it goes away. Yeah, we might lose too much data doing that. Let's leave around 10. And then I'm going to go back in. I'm going to throttle below on accelerator position. say accelerator position is less than 10% because this is the area that I'm having the most drivability issues. I'm starting to believe that it is probably more to do with torque and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this adjustment in there uh, and then I'm going to blow my torque tables back to stock because they don't seem to like what is going on uh, with this tune and that's to be expected. I've done so much uh, adjustments on the torque tables They probably need to be reverted anyways and s basically started over But we're going to adjust them back to stock and see if that smooths out the drivability a little bit on the bottom end and we'll go from there so uh, Let me go ahead and make these changes and this is just the process. I've told you guys multiple times that it is iterative. It takes a long time to get all this stuff dialed in good. We do our best, hope for the best. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it skews our numbers terribly. And we end up getting a map that performs worse than it did before. And that's pretty common whenever it comes to vulture, or vulture, <laughs> volumetric efficiency. So as I said, we're just gonna kind of try and make sure 
that we're crossing over a little bit. It's never a bad idea to check your zones before you apply changes. Uh, be, once you paste your changes though, you can't look at your zones or it will dump your changes back out. So just keep that in mind. That looks better. We're gonna go ahead and leave that as it is. Copy that over to the uh, closed one. Done with it. And let's do compare file. Open compare. Let's find a 2015 Silverado. And then we are looking at torque model. So if we come into our comparison log, Go down to our torque stuff. Not worried about idle, airflow, fuel, spark, torque model. See if we can do it this way. Okay. That should have reset our torque model, and then we will do the same for our driver demand. Select differences. All those can stay the same. Let's go ahead and zero this one out for now too. Okay, and we'll save this for our next step. I'm gonna flash it, run into Lowe's real quick, grab what I need to grab, and uh, then we'll see how it drives on the way back to the house see if we've helped smooth it out some then if we need to we'll get into torque tuning so we got the ve table dialed in for the throttle body we had to go back and set the torque tables back to stock not necessarily set them back to stock but the torque tables need to be updated for the throttle body and there's been so much that's been going on with this recently setting it back to stock and doing a new torque tune is going to be the easiest approach uh, i verified uh, through a couple steps which I didn't really get into on this video uh, because it started having a swinging idle but that means we get to do some torque tuning videos but before we do that I'm going to swap this thing back over to the small pulley that way we're torn uh, we're doing the torque tuning with as much power as possible and then we will do a couple videos we'll start off by focusing on how to get the idle dialed in on your torque models and go from there because it is a kind of a in-depth long drawn out process but in order to properly tune all the torque stuff you have to get all of your ve and math stuff dialed in correctly first which we have now effectively done even doing that much and making some adjustments on the bottom end torque around idle has made this throttle body respond a hundred times better so the next step naturally is to go in and finish tuning that table out so make sure if you have not already subscribed to hit that button so you don't miss out as we dive into torque tuning the super auto here and all the steps are involved to getting that torque model right on a gen 5 platform as always i want to thank everybody from stopping i want to thank everybody from i want to thank everybody for stopping by the garage remember abt always be tuning